This video was brought to you by LogRocket, the front-end performance monitor that records videos of user sessions along with logs and network data, surfacing problems and revealing the root cause of every bug. Try it today at LogRocket.com YT. Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from AlexMercedeCoder.com with this video for LogRocket. And in this video we're going to be talking about is JSON Web Token. Okay, now what is a JSON Web Token? or JWT or JOT, all these different ways that people refer to it. Essentially what it is, and again, you can kind of see it right here on the JWT website, JSON Web Tokens are an open industry standard method for representing claims between two parties. What does that mean? Well, really what it just means is that you're creating a token, which is just gonna be a string of numbers and letters that are essentially some different encoded pieces of information. So we can actually just see it in action, like right down here. So generally, any JWT token will be a hash with a different hashing algorithm. So you can see here several different algorithms you can choose from. I'll just leave the default on, okay? And then basically what happens is you end up with a string that looks like this. And notice that there's three parts to the string, and each part is separated by a dot. Okay, so the first part of the string is the header. Okay, and the header tells you what the algorithm is for that this was hashed with and what type of token it is. And then here, the middle part is the payload. So here you can actually put information, I can add information, okay? So we'll say, let's say I put something like, um, you know, service log rocket. Okay? And that is all encoded within this piece of string right here, okay? And then the last piece is the signature. Okay, so again, it's the header, the payload, which is the data, and then the signature. And the signature basically contains a, a secret. Okay, like a, 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 it could be like a word. So it could be something like, like log rocket, could be your secret key. And basically what happens is that when it goes to decode the token, you give the decoder a secret key. And if the secret key matches the encoded string, then you know this is like authentically one, a string that belongs to your application because you try to come up with a string that only your application will know. So the benefit here is I can decode and encode these tokens, okay, based on a particular algorithm. And then because I have a secret key, I can identify which tokens actually belong. So that way people don't try to feed like nefarious information. So it's a way of being able to send information securely without having to you know, save stuff in a session token or a cookie or whatnot. We still will may, we'll use cookies later on, but not necessarily necessary. It's just a string and you can ship information around. Okay, now, when do you usually use JWT tokens? There could be several use cases, but the primary use case is gonna be generally for authentication of APIs or of you know, database communications between server to server, where you wanna track that someone is logged in or authenticated but you know, it's kind of outside of the bounds of using something like a session cookie or whatnot. Now, oftentimes authentication is handled through uh, session tokens or session cookies, which are these cookies that are generated when your browser accesses a server. So it says, okay, hey, your browser has a unique session ID. I'm gonna make a little cookie that attaches to it so that every time your browser accesses or sends a request to my server, I'm going to identify that session and then I will be able to pull data out of a database that's associated with that session. And the problem with using JWT tokens in your session is that sessions generally, that session cookie tends to get sent with every request. And JWT strings can be large. So it adds some extra sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, some weight, some bandwidth, some overhead to every request. So we want to kind of avoid that. So generally, if you're going to use sessions when basically it's your site look authenticating within itself. So if this is a page that's like rendered with a template, so like you're using Ruby on Rails with embedded Ruby templates and you're authenticating or you're using like Express with like EJS templates or Laravel with Blade templates, basically the idea is it's all sort of contained within one site. You don't have multiple applications. There's no like separation. Kind of like you typically would see with like a React, Vue or Angular application where the backend application is separate from the front end application. In that case, JWT starts to make a lot more sense because now you're starting to communicate and trying to communicate authentication 
between applications. Let's just kind of explain like how that would work. Okay, so essentially what would happen is you would have your server. Okay, so let's say here's your server. Okay, this could be created in any language with any backend framework. You're creating an API. Because that's typically when you're going to use JW tokens. When you're talking about authentication with an API or an authentic or authentication between servers. So the idea here is I have one server, one API here. And then I have this front end application and like doot, front end application right here. Front end, and this could be like React, Vue, Svelte, SolidJS, Angular, you get the idea. Okay, so what will happen is that they'll send the information saying that they want to log in. So you'll send like the username and password that gets sent to the server. And then they're going to check, okay, is this user exists? Is this, pa is this password correct? And then what happens is that instead of creating like saving some data in a session, okay, that says like, okay, this user is logged in, here's the user information that's associated with this particular browser session, what you will do is you will send over a JWT token. Okay, you'll send over a JWT token. So let's actually just draw that token. There we go. Now, the big question goes this, and again, the big difference is like when you use session, the data is actually stored on the server. You actually store it in a database. So, in that case, every time that session is passed through as a cookie, the server then goes and fetches data from a database. In the JWT token, all the data is stored in the token. So instead of being stored in the database, now the front end has this token, which they could store in memory, meaning they just stored it in a variable in that front end application, just like you would create any variable in JavaScript, or you could store it in a cookie, which is what we'll be doing. And probably more discouraged would be something uh, such as saving it in local or session storage, which again, can leave yourself open to things like cross-site scripting uh, attacks where people can create like run malicious JavaScript code on your website and access your local storage or session storage to get th that token and then be able to fake their authentic authenticity. So specifically HTTP only tokens or cookies are gonna be the way to go because HTTP only cookies cannot be accessed by JavaScript in the browser. So they're protected from like cross-site scripting attacks they're automatically going to be sent with every request, which is really nice because then you don't have to sit there and like add like a header to every request automatically. Um, so generally that's going to be sort of the way to go. Okay. So again, when you're doing a front end application, now let's say we have two servers. Okay. Let's say you have another server API, but the idea is that the user, like imagine like, let's say Google, you know, you have one Google account, but there's like maybe dozens, if not hundreds of APIs across Google services, okay, using different servers. Well, instead of having to like re-authenticate yourself, what would happen is that like, let's say your front end application communicates or some, any application communicates with this other server, that other server is aware that of the secret key that was originally used to sign this JWT token. So in that case, we would just send that JWT token so we would just ship that right over like we and that server can then decode that token. Okay. Because it has that secret key. So I don't have to worry because usually with two servers, sessions are unique. These are, this would be two different URLs. This could be, let's say, this could be, um, you know, main.xyz.com. And then this could over here could be like, other.xyz.com. So it's the same website, but they're different servers or different applications. So the browser wouldn't know the same, the same, send the same session token or same session cookie over to the other server. That's the beauty of JWT. It doesn't matter which server you're talking to. It's the front end that decides to send that sort of uh, cookie over. Okay. So then they can just send it over. And because again, may, we may set it up through HTTP only an HTTP only uh, cookie here. But we can also again send them a copy of the token they can save in memory and then when they communicate with this server over here they can then send over the token in a header and then this server will know this person's already logged in with this server and basically we just keep passing that token around to these servers and that makes life a lot easier okay 
So this is why we would use JWT tokens with an API, because again, you have that portability of that. And the way to kind of think about it is if you've ever been to a conference, usually they handle authentication in two ways at a conference. You're either having to like check in and then everywhere you go, they have like a little checkboard with the list of all the attendees. That'd be more like a session token. Like it's the conference bears the data that you've logged in. While JWT is more like getting a lanyard with a badge that you can go around and like flash at different uh, breakout groups and stuff like that. Okay, so that is sort of the, the cool thing there. Now, as you saw earlier, we could set the authentic, we could set the type of algorithm that gets set for the particular JWT token. And that's pretty cool. But not only that, you can set an expiration date. And generally that's gonna be done in milliseconds. So you see here, when we create our payload, our payload can include a property called IAT, which means this is invalid at this time. And then that way the token expires. So that's gonna be a way to set an expiration of the token. But how do you settle these settings? How do you do this in your code? Regardless of what language you're using or what backend framework, there's going to generally be a JWT library for that particular framework, for that particular language. So right here on the JWT website, jwtio.com, you can actually uh, see all of that. Okay, so if we just scroll down, oh, maybe not down there. Here we go, libraries. We'll see a list of all these different libraries. So you can see like different languages, and these are all sort of different libraries. That you can install. So right here at the bottom, you can see the what you do to install that particular library. So here are some different libraries for .NET. So there's a lot of libraries for .NET. Python, Node. We're gonna be using Node specifically. So yeah, lots and lots of libraries. So this is where you would go and then install that library. So just to kind of show this to you as an example, I've made a quick little Express app. So just to kind of walk you through the code that I have here so far, we have Express, which is gonna be our backend framework. So I've created an express application object that allows us to create a server. And then I've also installed this middleware called cookie parser because we're gonna be using a HTTP only cookie. So to receive that cookie, we need to be able to parse that cookie and that's what the cookie parser does. Okay, now this server has two routes, one to set the cookie. So theoretically, this could be a login route. We would log in, they would check that you know the passwords match and then it would create that HTTP only cookie with our JWT token and send it back. And then we have a route so we can just confirm that we got we set that co cookie. And I'm going to be doing this on port 3555 is where I'm setting up the server. The only thing I'm missing is a JWT library. I don't have the JSON web token library. So I'm going to just briefly install that npm install JSON web token. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to server.js. And basically, I'm going to import that JWT library. So in oh, const JWT equals require JSON web token. So that imports the library. And now I have that library here in JWT. So in this set the cookie uh, sec section, what I want to do is create a cookie. So we'll, I'm going to create an arbitrary object. So we'll just say const payload. This is going to be the data we want to send over equals, and I'm just gonna put my name in there. So a name, Alex Merced, age 36, website, alexmercedcoder.com. Okay, cool. Now we have this payload, and the idea here is that we're gonna assume that this is the data of the information of the user that just logged in. We wanna encode this information so that way we can send this token that has that data kind of stored inside of it. So first thing I would do is I would create the token. So const token equals jwt dot sign. I want to sign a token, meaning I want to create a token. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass it the payload. So you can see here in the function signature, I'm going to pass it the payload. Then I'm going to pass it the secret. Okay, um, and then you could, that's pretty much it. And then you can pass some additional options if you want. Okay, so here, first thing I'm going to do is pass in the payload. That's, a, that's the data that I want in the token, in that middle section of the token. And then I'm gonna pass in a secret key, which could be, I could create some sort of like big, you know, uh, encrypted string that I only store in one place. But for now, we're just gonna say log rocket. Log rocket will be our secret key. 
Okay, so this, this will be signed with this string of log rocket. And now I can send this token as part of the cookie. So basically what this does is I'm going to respond to the request with a cookie called token that's HTTP only true. Okay, and then we're going to send a message cookie shipped. Now I want to verify that I actually got the cookie and I want to verify that the cookie has the JWT token in it that has the data. So when I get, so in this request, what I'm going to do is check to see if I got the cookie. And I'm going to do a, um, and I was going to verify the token. So let's see here. So the idea here is the token should be stored in, so in this case, const token should equal rec.cookies.token because we stored it in a key called token within the cookies. Okay, we called the cookies token. Um, and I think it's rec. Yep, rec.cookies.token. And then we're going to verify that. So we're going to say const payload because we're going to verify the payload. And then we do jwt.verify. I'm going to verify the token. And then I need to pass it the token and then pass it the key again. So again, th this route would only be able to access that data if it knew what the secret key was. Okay, and then I can say, because if I use the wrong string, the wrong secret key, it'll it'll fail. And then I can identify, like, this is not a token that this app wants to be handling. So ignore that. Okay, and I can handle that issue and say, no, I'm going to ignore this. But let's see here. If this all works, let's try this out. I should have the token and the payload, and we'll make that the response so we can see what happens. So what I'm going to do is just run this application, node server.js. And let's see here. The first route is set cookie and get cookie. So let's go to localhost 3555. Let's do it to this first set the cookie. Okay, so the cookie was shipped. So theoretically, we just sent a request to our server and it set that it created that cookie with that hard coded information. So now if I go to get cookie, And that worked. So you see, like this was here's the token that got signed by the previous request. So you can see, like there's the token, the big long string with all that stuff encoded. But then again, we verified that token. So we decoded that token, and there's all the data inside. Okay. Technically, this token is being stored in the browser. Okay, in that HTTP only cookie and being sent on request. So in this case, there's no need to store the. This data isn't actually stored in a database anywhere but my server can use it because it can always parse that cookie and I get access to those details. And then that's the beauty of JWT. When you have a bunch of decentralized microservices, a bunch of mini applications talking to each other, you don't have to worry about having to store the same data in each application's database or, or every application having the same access to the same database. They can just pass around this data through these JWT tokens and long as they all use the same secret key, they can verify that the tokens are authentic and grab the information from inside the token. And that's the beauty of JWT. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. My name is Alex Merced uh, with this video for LockRocket. Have a great day. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed the tutorial, you can see the full tutorial in our blog post linked in the description below. And if you want to see more videos and tutorials like this, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and leave a comment in the comment section below. You can also find more tutorials and videos we've already posted on our YouTube page.